Hi, this is Amy, and welcome to Yoga for Seniors. Today's video is going to focus on some chair and some floor yoga using props. The props that you'll need will be a simple pillow to go underneath your knees or your hips for certain exercises, as well as a flexible belt. I have a yoga strap, but any cloth belt or long scarf could also do the trick. So, let's go ahead. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that before you engage in this or any other exercise activity, be sure to talk to your doctor. Okay, so I invite you to find a comfortable chair that you can sit in, let your feet touch the floor, sit all the way back in your chair, bring your hands to your lap, close your eyes, start to take some slow, deep breaths in and out through your nose. Start to become aware of places that you're feeling tension in your body. As you inhale, draw your attention to that area. As you exhale, start to visualize that tension leaving that part of the body. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and release the tension, release the tightness. As you take your next exhale, slowly lower your chin downward towards your chest. Now gradually roll your right ear towards your right shoulder and relax your left shoulder down. Roll your chin back down to your chest. And now roll your left ear towards your left shoulder keeping your right shoulder relaxed. Now slowly bring your chin back down to your chest, opening your eyes, and lift your head back up to a neutral position. Let's go ahead and sit forward in our chairs. Make sure your feet are where you stay comfortably on the floor. If you're in a taller chair, perhaps substituting for a slightly shorter one, or maybe bringing a book or two underneath your feet so that they are coming into contact with the floor and not dangling down. So we're gonna start just by relaxing the arms down by the side. Some simple shoulder rolls. Inhale, lift the shoulders. Exhale, roll them back. Deep breath in. Exhale. Three, two, last one. Now take a deep breath in, sweep the arms out to the side, lifting up as high as you can without pain. Exhale, float the arms back down. If you have a shoulder injury and you need to take one of the arms a little bit lower, maybe stopping here and going all the way up with the other one, you're welcome to do that. Just working through a pain-free range of motion. 
getting as much movement as possible without causing harm to the body. One more time, deep breath in, exhale. All right, so we're gonna do a little hamstring stretch this morning. So I'd like you to take your belt. We're gonna scoot back a little bit so our back is closer to the back of the chair. We feel comfortable and secure. We're gonna bend our knee and place the belt underneath the sole of the foot and then extend forward and slide the hands back towards your body so that your arms and your shoulders are comfortably resting and your leg is just being held and supported while you feel a stretch in the back of the leg. Take some slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose. And now slowly bring the foot back down towards the floor. You're gonna take your belt, move it underneath the left foot, again, under the sole of the foot, either the arch or the ball of the foot. Try to keep it away from the toes and kind of bring it down a little bit further. And then lift up slowly. Once you feel the stretch in the back of your leg, just pause right there. That may be different places for different people. It may be down a little bit lower for some of you, maybe up a little bit higher for some. And now slowly release, bring back down to the floor. Now let's go ahead and take our strap. Gonna take hold of it, shoulder width distance apart, just working a range of motion of our arms and shoulders again, bringing it down to the lap. Inhale, slowly lift up as high as you can. Now if you have a shoulder injury, you may not be able to go as high on this because you're going to have to lift the arm that has the injury dictate how high and how low you drop the arms down. Deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale, up. Exhale. One more time. Deep breath in. Exhale. Now moving into just a little gentle twist. We can keep the hold right here. Maybe move forward a little bit so you've got a little bit more space behind you in your chair. Inhale, twist gently to one side, just a tiny bit. Come back to center. And the other side, exhale. And back to center. Inhale, twist. Center. Exhale. Center. Let's do two more steps. All right. Now we're going to stretch our quadriceps. That's the, that's the great big thigh muscle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn sideways. We're going to take hold of our belt fairly far down near the ends of the belt. So we're creating a little loop. We're going to bring our ankle into that loop. Just place the foot through. And you may want to slide one hip off the front of the chair. Keep the other one firmly on the chair, maybe holding on to the chair back with an elbow or an arm for security. Then you're just going to slowly take the toe off the floor. Let the knee drop right underneath your hip, and you're just going to gently ease your heel upward slightly, making sure that this doesn't cause pain for the knee. Slow deep breaths. And slowly release. Release your foot from the strap. 
Walk and face the other side. Take hold of the strap at the very ends or your belt at the very ends. You can do forward facing when you take your foot through and then all you're going to do is kind of slide after you get the foot through, slide around to the ankle. Right kind of where the ankle and the foot meet is one of the best places. You can move your strap down a little bit further on the shin if that's more comfortable. Pull upward and hold. And gently release, remove your foot, and then walk your body back around to the front. All right, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put the strap onto the floor. You might want to step to the side first, reaching down safely, placing it on the floor behind us, and then coming back into our chair. Let's go ahead and bring our hands to our laps, moving into a little bit of cat and cow breathing, allowing ourselves to just kind of loosen up those muscles that surround both sides of the spine. As we inhale, we're going to lift the chest up, open across the chest, pull the shoulder blades together behind the back, let your hips tip back slightly so that your low back has a gentle arch to it. Deep breath, lifting up. Exhale, pull the belly button towards the spine, take those shoulders and hips, scoop them forward, drop the hips slightly, into cat. Inhale, lifting up to cow. Exhale, stretching to cat. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Deep breath in. Exhale. Three, two, last one. And come back. All right, let's go ahead and come to a standing position. We do a few standing stretches and then safely make our way down to the floor. What I'd like you to do is come beside your chair or behind it. If you need to hold on with two hands, move the body all the way behind. I'm going to come beside it and just use a single hand. Moving into some chair squats. I'm going to turn in the side profile. You're welcome to do that too. Deep breath in. Stand up nice and tall. Exhale. Our feet are hip width distance apart. Our weight is pulling back into our heels. So if you want to for a moment, lift your toes up, pull that weight back, then bring the toes back in. Then we're going to exhale, sink the hips back, keep the chest lifted, inhale, come back up. The other thing I want you to think of, aside from lifting the chest and pulling the weight back, is engaging the core, pulling inward and upward as the hips pull back. And lift up. Exhale, sink back. And up. Four more times. Four. Three. Two. Last one. All right. Now we're going to do a little bit of balance work. Again, use the chair as much as you need to. We're going to start by taking one toe back. We're going to breathe in. We're going to lift the foot up a little bit. And notice as I'm lifting the foot, I'm keeping the spine in line. So I'm dropping the chest slightly. And inhale, come back up. Exhale, lift the foot, tilt the chest. 
and back up. Still got one hand on the chair at least, if not two, for support. But letting my brain and my body really have that sensation of finding its balance, creating that muscular support as we go slightly off balance. Two more times. Last one. All right, switch feet and shake out both legs for a moment. Take your other toe back. Heel lightly. Hold the belly button in. And up. If you want to face the chair, you can also do two hands. Just take that second hand down as an option. Three. Two. Last one. All right. Now I'd like, if you've moved behind the chair, to come around to face your chair seat. We're going to do a modified half forward fold. So coming and facing the chair seat, stand up nice and tall, take a deep breath in, exhale, hinge from your hips. Bring your chest forward, reach a hand down towards the chair. Maybe coming a little bit further if you've got space. You can even possibly come down to the elbows, just be mindful that the lower you start to drop your head, the more likely you might experience some dizziness. So we don't want to take our head too low below our heart. Maybe just about level. Take some slow, deep breaths. Now, if your hamstrings are really tight, you're not feeling much stretch right here in your low back, but you'd really like to, your other option would be to bend the knees slightly, still get that elongation of the muscles that surround the spine, and kind of take part of the resistance in the hamstrings out of that equation. Now we're going to take a deep breath in, work your way up, nice and slowly, and back around to the front. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do a quick standing balance here, again using the chair if you need to, if you have neuropathy. Please make sure you're keeping at least a few fingers on the chair, even if you feel really secure in your balance. It's just better to be safe and have that little bit of extra support just in case you need it. We're going to do a tree pose today. So bringing your foot beside your ankle or beside your calf, keeping it nice and low. If having your hip externally rotated is uncomfortable, you can bring it with the knee coming forward. And then we can stay here if we like. If you want to commit to balancing and don't have any nerve-related or balance-related issues and feel comfortable, maybe taking both hands off the chair. Or again, you can keep a fingertip on there if you need it. Zip the core up for balance. Take some slow, deep breaths. And then release. Shake out both legs. If you're using the chair, maybe move to the other side. If you're not using it, Simply moving into tree. And release it back down. All right, we're going to do one more standing stretch, and then we're going to transition safely down to the floor. So we're going to move into pyramid pose. Again, facing our chair seat. We're going to take our right foot slightly forward, our left foot slightly back. Our feet are still hip width distance apart, almost like we're standing on narrow train tracks. Take a deep breath in, hinge from your hips, come forward just like we did earlier in our forward fold. Maybe bringing fists down to the chair seat. And then we tend to pull back into our hips. What I want you to do is start to bring your weight a little bit more over that front leg that's going to level out the line of your hips. Slow deep breaths. 
And now slowly lift the chest back up. We're going to switch and bring the other foot forward. Deep breath in, lengthen the spine. Exhale, hinge from your hips. Hands come down to the chair seat. Weight comes slightly forward into that front leg. And lift, come back up. Walk both feet together. I'm going to move my chair over just a tiny bit so I've got some more space to work. I'm also going to grab my pillow and bring it down close to where I'm going to be working so that I'm not having to reach around the chair. Now to get down to the floor, some of you may be able to get down to the floor easily without any assistance. However, if getting up and down from the floor is not something you like to do very much, it's still useful to practice. If you were to fall, you need to be able to think about how am I going to get back up after a fall in order to get the help that I need. So, what I want you to do is practice getting up and down with the aid of a chair. So we're going to soften the knees a little bit, reaching for the chair seat. We're going to come down. Notice I'm coming on the front of my shin first. Come down onto the knee. Now, many people have knee issues. So what we're going to do is keep a lot of weight in this front foot first. Now, one of two things can happen. If bringing this next leg beside you is not a possibility, you can start to sink the hips back and pull your weight out of that knee. Otherwise, slide that other foot over. One hand down, shift your body weight, let your hips sink back off to the side. Now my weight is in my hands, my hips can come down, and I'm on the floor. All right, so while we're on the floor, let's go ahead, we're going to find our pillow. Let's bring it right beside where we want to sit, and we're going to come and sit on top of that pillow. What being on a pillow, or if you'd like a stacked folded blanket, is going to do is it's going to give us a little lift so that we have a little bit greater range of motion in our hips. I'm going to move into cobbler's pose. So, Bending the knees, bringing the soles of the feet together, and then allowing gravity just to open the knees out to the side. Sitting up nice and tall. We're going to have our hands, just palms facing up, reaching out. Take some slow, deep breaths. We should be feeling the majority of the sensation right through the groin area and into the hips. And now close your knees like you're closing a book. All right. Now we're going to do a little shoulder stretch with our belt. Going to give you a couple of different options. You can stay seated like this. You can open out to the side. If lotus position is comfortable and you'd like to come into seated lotus, you're welcome to do so. Whichever position works best for you. I'm going to come into lotus simply because that's what works best for me today. So what we're going to do is move into the arms for Gomugasana or cow face pose. So I'd like you to take your belt in your right hand. We're going to take that arm up over our head. Let's kind of use the other hand to kind of push the belt behind our back. Now we're going to take our left hand. We're going to bend the right arm, starting to lower the belt behind the head. Take your left hand and see if you can locate the belt with your fingertips behind your back. Take hold with both hands. Sit up nice and tall. Keep that spine with them. Now you can start to walk the fingertips of your left hand up the belt a little bit or a lot, bringing the fingertips closer together, still feeling anchored and connected because you've got that belt still behind your back. And we're still sitting up nice and tall. Take some slow deep breaths. And now release the bottom portion first. 
and then release the top. You're going to pass the belt over to the other hand. You can leave the majority of the belt behind you. We're just going to lift that arm up, bend at the elbow, lower that hand behind the hip, take your right arm, find the belt with your fingertips, walk your hands towards each other as you're able, lengthen your spine, still sit up nice and tall. Don't start crunching forward. We're going to stay lengthen through our spine. And release the bottom hand first, and now the top. All right. Now we're going to do a few different hamstring stretch variations. I'd like to show these to you because some people prefer one over the other, so we're going to do several different ones. So what I'd like you to do is come off of that pillow gently. If you have really tight hamstrings, you, want to, you might want to take this opportunity to take that pillow, bring it underneath your knees. Now we can take the strap, hold on to the ends, kind of throw it out, capture the bottom of your feet, sit up nice and tall, start to bring your chest forward with the spine long. Notice I've got my arms still very close to me. I'm not reaching out with my shoulders and my arms. I've got them nice and close. I'm just gliding my chest forward lengthening my hamstrings, underside of my leg, and lengthening the muscles along my spine. Just so you can see, I'm going to turn sideways. I'm going to take the pillow out from underneath my knees a little bit, but we'll pretend it's still right there. So sitting up tall, hinging forward. Notice I'm not starting to round. I'm lifted, bringing the chest forward. If I don't need that pillow under my knees, maybe I can go a little bit straighter and come forward. Should be feeling sensation back here and a nice stretch right here. My neck stays nice and relaxed. And if I'm not sure, I can turn my head from side to side just to make sure I'm not putting tension into my neck. And then come back up. We can also stretch one leg at a time. Bending our knee, bringing the foot beside either the knee or the thigh. And maybe the hip's a little bit tight, and so we can bring one foot beside the other, but our knee doesn't want to go down. You can take that pillow, tuck it underneath, so that the leg can stay relaxed. Sit up nice and tall. Again, lead with your heart. Keep the spine long. Coming forward, this time into Janusha Shasana or a hurdler stretch. And now come back up. Anytime we do a single leg stretch, we're going to make sure we do both sides. So switch to the other side. Bring your foot beside your knee or beside your thigh. Sit up tall. Again, if our knee is up here, take that pillow. Tuck it underneath. Deep breath in. Hinging forward. Slowly lift and come back. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do a lying down stretch. This will stretch our hamstrings again, but we're also going to get into a special area. And I'm going to turn sideways. So we have a great big muscular band that reaches from our iliac crest on our hip down the side of our thigh, past the side of our knee, and connects with our tibia bone. That is called the iliotibial band or the IT band. A lot of times that gets very, very tight. And the way you notice, is my IT band tight? Others, I'm just trying to stretch. Is if you walk, and you tend to walk externally rotated, the feet are kind of turned out, usually that's a result of a tighter IT band. The more regular stretching that you do with your IT band, the more your gait can start to become a little bit more in line versus externally rotated, which can provide a little bit of release for your knees. So let's go ahead and we're going to work on getting all the way down to the floor. I'm going to simply hold on behind my legs, 
and roll myself down onto my spine. Relax my shoulders down. I can even take this pillow, tuck it under my head if I want, or I can be flat on my back. So I'm going to start with my knees bent. Heels are close to my hips. I'm going to extend and kind of bring the strap underneath the arch of the foot or the ball of the foot and extend upward. Now, let me put that in my way. This is stretching the hamstrings. And relax my shoulders completely into the mat. Take some slow deep breaths. May need to be right here. Maybe here is too far. Maybe you're really limber and I can come up here. Just wherever you need to be for today. Now we're going to move into stretching the IT band. So what I want to do is I want to move my knee out of the way a little bit, kind of extending my heel away from my hip. And then I'm going to slightly glide my leg diagonally across my body until I feel that tension created in that IT band area. As soon as I feel the tension, I'm going to stop. Take some slow, deep breaths in and out through my nose. Maybe close the eyes for a minute. Slowly come back to center. And now we're going to do a quick hip stretch. So I can bend this knee that's extended, gently pull down, letting the knee kind of move to the outside of the rib cage. And I'm opening this hip of this side. Now, I don't want to roll towards the hip, so I may want to take my free hand, kind of use it as a counterbalance on the opposite side. And now bring the foot back down to the floor safely. We can switch to the other side while both feet are side by side. Again, bending the knees a little closer to the body. Bring the knee close up. Extend outward as high as you can extend. And maybe you need to keep the knee bent just a tiny bit because the hamstrings feel kind of tight. That's quite all right. As long as you are feeling a little bit of resistance and stretching sensation, you're doing what you need to do for your body today. Now let's move into that IT band stretch. So we're going to go the opposite way. Tiny bit. Now bring the leg back to where you started. Bend at the knee. Now let's slowly lower down. Feeling that opening now in this hip. And now release the foot back down to the floor. Now normally we do Shavasana, our final relaxation, seated in the chair. And you can certainly do that. However, I'd like to show you another option. Especially if you tend to suffer from some ankle swelling. That you can kind of scoot next to your chair. Take one leg at a time. Place it up onto the chair. You can use your shoulders and hips to scoot a little bit closer. Make sure that the low back is kissing the floor, the hips are relaxed, legs can be in the chair. Then we're gonna take our palms and we're gonna rotate those to face upward so that our shoulders and our chest are open and relaxed. Take some slow, deep breaths in and out through our nose. Closing our eyes. Our awareness is coming to our chest. We have the intention to take four deeper breaths at a nice slow pace. 
filling the lungs as much as we can on our inhale. And intending to exhale deeply, letting the belly sink downward. Now take a deep breath in, wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bring your awareness back to your body. And then you can reach both of your arms gently over your head and stretch out through your upper torso. And now bring your arms back beside your body. We're going to get our legs off the chair one at a time. So I want you to hold on to the leg that's closest to the outside of the chair. Ease it down and start to rotate your shoulders. Then take the other leg, rotating, rolling onto your side. We're going to use the hand furthest away from the floor. You can either make a flat palm or a fist, depending on what feels best. We're going to push up just a little bit. As we push up, we're going to bend that elbow, slide it underneath. Now we've got this arm and this arm both trying to leverage us upward from the floor. Continue to push. Now with both hands, come back to seated position. Now for getting up. Remember, we took one knee at a time to get down. We're going to do the same thing to come back up. If you're worried about knees on the floor and being uncomfortable, you've got your pillow down here. Make sure it's not going to slide out from underneath you. We're going to put it underneath our hip. If you want to use the pillow, you don't have to if you don't want to. Now, we're going to place a hand on the floor and a hand on the chair. Start to push up. Now, we've got one knee firmly underneath us. Take both hands to the chair, two knees. Now, we're going to take one foot forward, both hands still on the chair. Bring the weight into this foot. Bring the other foot underneath us. Head for time. And now we're back up to standing again. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I look forward to teaching another class again soon. Have a great day.